My name is Matt Hall. Uh, I'm Algonquin College uh, alumni, I guess you'd call it now, a little more gray in the beard area. Graduated in 2004. Um, I'm currently the executive chef at Next in Stittsville. Um, I'll start off by just telling what uh, what we've got going on out in at Next, and we call it Stitz Vegas on the outskirts of town. Um, we've got a 90-seat a a la carte restaurant uh, dining room, obviously. 50 seats at a time. So what we found has been working for us as of late is two seatings of 30 to 40 each night and the same as Sunday brunch. Um, and it's all about for us now maximizing revenue streams. So we've got our turkey takeaway program we've launched, um, curated meal kits. It, that includes a bottle of wine, uh, cocktail, two canapes, a seven course meal. And it all comes, uh, you get an email out with a YouTube video of a curated uh, completely we, we tell you the clients how to cook. Um, so instead of having 200 people in the restaurant, which is against regulations and nobody wants to be doing that anyways, um, the clients come and pick up their box kit, they get the YouTube link and they open the video and they're, they're cooking alongside us uh, in their own kitchens with their own plateware. Um, we've got takeout from our a la carte restaurant as well. Um, and we've got, uh, what did we launch? We've got our own pickles and sauces and the, uh, for purchase in the dining room. And it's just all about maximizing revenue. How many stokes, how many steaks can you get in your, in your restaurant's fire, uh, to keep the fire burning and not be uh, one of the places that has to, to close up shop after years and years of blood, sweat and blood, sweat equity that goes into all these beautiful little restaurants that it's just so sad and shame to see them. I'm closing up so um it's another hat that an executive chef has to wear along with ownership and business partners of the of the company not only your your lead dishwasher your light bulb changer your electrician your plumber you're now having to figure out how to refocus um, not necessarily rebrand but just uh keep coming up with ideas on how to maximize revenue how do you, what do you think the prospects are like like if you had a crystal ball and, and a student said to you what's it going to look like in two three years once i graduate and sort of get a bit of experience do you is there things that they should be focusing on or skills they should be developing to try and position themselves for success in a couple of years and in terms of focusing on on future years and success um i would just suggest get your resumes out there uh, get into as many kitchens as you can. I know a lot of not a lot of people are hiring, but um, um, just until the the restrictions are lifted, then the kitchens will be hiring again, and it's basically going to be starting a whole new whole new crew from scratch. So you need that that strong work ethic that it takes. Uh, it's not all about the money. You will you will see the paycheck eventually. Um, you got to work your work your way up to the up to the top of the the kitchen ladder, I guess, so to speak. So. Um, hard work ethic and always ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Uh, as a chef, you would rather see somebody come to you with a question as opposed to try to figure it out for themselves and not have it be to the, the specifications of the recipe or how the chef wants it. Um, and it's all about learning. That's the great thing about cooking, right? You're, you'll never learn everything there is to know. I'm learning on a day-to-day -day basis. What I tell my cooks, if you don't learn some little tidbit of information, how to set up a cutting board or where to keep your, your tasting spoons, where to keep your, your chive dice, your pick cilantro on the station, um, what, what works easiest for the execution of service. If you don't learn one little tidbit each day, then you're, you're not working hard enough and you're, the groundwork's being made now. So I guess ideally you guys are in the, the best shape because two, three years when you're done your program, all of the infrastructure is going to be there for what uh, is a successful food and beverage operation. All right. How, how busy is, uh, I just looked at your, was looking at your site earlier today and uh, your uh, evening business, uh, Wednesday to Friday. How, how busy are you? Are you, are you Friday, well, like you mentioned the website and that's just another hat that, that Blackie's got on. He's coded that entire website himself. We don't have an IT guy. We don't have an IT team. We're closing Monday, Tuesday, hence my, this is my Saturday, right? <laughs> <laughs> no deal there. So Wednesday, Thursday, it's pretty quiet. We'll do 30 to 40 throughout the night. And then Friday, Saturday is the, the big crunch. So we'll maximize out anywhere between 70 and 90. Um, and it's tricky too, because it's, you've got to only have the 50 people in, in house at a time. Right. So we've, we tried it with different, with a five and a seven thirty seating. And last weekend we tried, uh, 
an hour and a half seating because then we opened up one of our, our ballrooms for a la carte as well just to see and it we'll try it for another couple of weeks to see how it goes but it, they were both pretty well equal in terms of maximizing guests as much as we can too um and then with the takeout too we're doing friday saturday sunday we're anywhere between three and four grand of takeout so it's wow. we're doing okay we'll be we'll be fine and that's the that's the the promising part of this mess like like i was mentioning earlier you see all these restaurants who have no cookie cutter solution that if they can't figure it out then sadly there's only one option which is just such a shame to see such a blood sweat and tears industry and craft just go down the drain for something that's completely out of anyone's control.